The apocalypse is approaching. The truth will be revealed on April 8, 2024. April 8, the day that will send shockwaves across the globe. On that day, the United States will be plunged into darkness by an extremely rare total solar eclipse in history. What is more surprising, this phenomenon is closely related to the most powerful man in America, President Donald Trump. Some people even believe that this phenomenon is about the end-time prophecy in the Bible dealing with the Great Tribulation period seven years ago. Before starting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button, and press the bell to receive the latest information from the world. In addition to the bright planets and meteor showers visible throughout the spring season, a once-in-a-lifetime solar eclipse will darken our daytime sky on April 8th, which means the next few days at night on March 19th, the sun will cross the celestial equator from south to north, signifying the earliest start to spring in 128 years since 1996. Some astronomical events will happen after that, and on April 8th, the total solar eclipse will come. The full total solar eclipse experience will plunge people along a narrow path into darkness midday, but people outside the path of totality can still use eclipse glasses to see the moon pass in front of the sun. It's an awesome and confusing sight on the ground and in the sky. On that day, the sun, moon, and earth will line up perfectly to cast the shadow of the moon across the planet, producing a total solar eclipse visible along a narrow path that extends from southwest to northeast across North America, from Mexico to Canada, passing through 14 U.S. states. All of Canada has a chance to see at least a partial eclipse during this event, however. This is the first time since February 26, 1979, that the total solar eclipse will be directly visible from the south part of Canada. A total solar eclipse is a rare celestial event to occur in any one place. They happen when the moon passes precisely between the sun and the earth, projecting a moon shadow onto the planet. If you stand under the path of that shadow, all of the sun's rays will be blocked out for a few minutes, and you'll experience darkness in the day. Even if it's cloudy, the exact start time, end time, and duration for the eclipse, as well as how much of the sun will be covered by the moon at maximum, depends on exactly where you are located. A total solar eclipse is also far more impressive than a lunar or an annular solar eclipse. During an annular eclipse, the moon covers the sun, but leaves an outside ring, some call a ring of fire. It darkens the sky instead of plunging Earth into a night-like darkness, which is what happens during a total solar eclipse. And a lunar eclipse, the appearance of a red moon, happens when the moon passes into the Earth's shadow. Many people believe that this is a normal natural phenomenon, but some people believe that it is definitely a message from our God. Calamity is coming. God is turning away from us as punishment for our misdeeds. The hour of doom has come for my people Israel. I will not pardon them again, God says in the book of Amos, one of several biblical passages relating the horrors of a solar eclipse. I will make the sun set at noon. I will darken the earth on a sunny day before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. I will set portents in the sky and on earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, says a passage in the book of Joel. The sun shall turn into darkness, and the moon into blood. It's not surprising that solar eclipses were considered bad omens by the ancient Israelites. The daytime darkness that solar eclipses bring feels intuitively ominous, or at the very least, gloomy. During them, animals behave strangely. Plants may react as well. The temperature can drop up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Some say that an eclipse where the sun appears red means war is coming, while a black shadow predicts famine. Is it a sign from God? Is God trying to tell us something? A solar eclipse may seem like an odd occurrence, but it is no secret to God or the authors of the Bible. We know from Scripture that God uses signs and wonders in heaven to communicate with His people. That includes rare solar eclipses. Some believe that from a biblical point of view, a solar eclipse is meant to be a sign from God. In Genesis 1.14, God declared this to be so. It is a sign that is beyond man's control, something he cannot manipulate. Solar eclipses become biblically and prophetically significant and relevant. When man understands their timing according to the biblical calendar and where they happen, then we look for the patterns. 
Several end times voices believe the coming total solar eclipse is a sign from God. But for a solar eclipse to take place at a particular time may not seem to be a big deal. There is a total solar eclipse visible somewhere around the globe about every 18 months. However, from any one location on Earth, total eclipses take place on average only once in several hundred years. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the Earth, blocking out a large chunk of the sun's rays. On the other hand, if we see the Bible, we must know it to better understand if God is giving us a sign or warning. In the Bible, there are passages through the Bible that talk about the sun being blacked out by darkness, descending on the land. During the plagues of Egypt, God covered the land in darkness. Exodus 10, 21, 23. The message. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Like that, one more time, the Old Testament book of Joshua may contain the oldest known reference to a solar eclipse recorded by humanity. And it occurred 3,224 years ago. According to the book of Joshua 10, 12, 13, Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hastened not to go down for about a whole day. Then during Jesus' crucifixion, referenced in the New Testament, something remarkably similar happened. Mark 15.32 33 says, Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now, when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. We even see biblical prophecies about the sun going dark. Revelation 6.12 says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. This is not the only passage that predicts this. We also see this in the book of Matthew and Mark, foretelling some sort of eclipse. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Similar words are said in Mark 13, 24. Many Christians believe that the total solar eclipse is a huge sign from God as the sun is larger than the moon. The sun represents the nations of the world, and the moon represents the nation of Israel, as their calendar months are based on the cycle of the moon while the nations of the world follow the sun for their calendar. When there is a total solar eclipse, it is a warning to a specific nation or nations depending on its path in the Bible. Jesus said that there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars just before his return. So, you may believe without any doubt that this solar eclipse is his warning of our Lord Jesus Christ's return. How about you, our brothers and sisters? Do you think a solar eclipse is a warning from God? If so, leave your sins and prepare for the coming of the Lord. May the grace of God sustain you. Amen. God's Urgent Warning to America in order to understand the sign, you've got to look to the past. You've got to look throughout the Bible where the signs have occurred previously. You have to look at the world events and you have to discern correctly who, what, when, where, and why. And after looking at everything, we can take a step back and see if there is, in fact, a warning sign occurring or if there is indeed a particular biblical prophetic connection to Bible prophecy that may, in fact, very well be unfolding. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 1, 9, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. In other words, history repeats itself. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. This means that God still speaks as he always has. And he always deals with sin and the nations as he always has. 
Some patterns exist throughout history and throughout the Bible that have repeated themselves over and over concerning the state of a nation's idolatry and sin that God has dealt with. There were, in fact, signs that occurred with every major prophet in the Bible who spoke concerning Israel's idolatry and sin. For example, we see in Revelation 6 concerning the four horsemen of the Apocalypse, dealing with God's judgment of the nations. They are a conqueror or world leader of some sort, leading a global conquest, followed by war, division, and civil unrest, the power to take peace from the earth, famine, and economic hardship impacting harvests and wiping out economies, followed by death, plague, illness, pestilence, and disease. Although we see this occurring on a grand global scale, these four signs have happened repeatedly over and over again throughout the Bible and in history concerning God dealing with the sins and idolatries of a nation. For example, God raised up the Babylonian conqueror, Nebuchadnezzar, to carry out judgment not just against Israel, but all the surrounding nations including Egypt, Assyria, and Moab, even against the Philistines and the Phoenicians who dwell in the area, known today as the Gaza Strip. Just prior to the sieges, according to the prophet Jeremiah, there was also a severe plague and famine in the area that had been ravaging the land for several years, which weakened the nations in preparation for Babylon. Jeremiah 38, 2 says, Thus says the Lord, he who remains in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he who goes over to the Chaldeans shall live. His life shall be as a prize to him, and he shall live. If you take a look at what's happened recently, beginning in 2020, we had all four signs present over not just America, but the world. Plague, famine, economic hardships, major civil unrest concerning the riots and protests, followed lastly with war dealing with Russia. All of these things are signs of sin and idolatry that are occurring in the nations and signs of God's judgments on the earth. It doesn't mean it's the end times, although the signs are all around us that we are drawing ever so nearer. But they are nonetheless signs of judgment and idolatry. So if these are in fact signs of judgment, there must be a reason for an event or something to have happened to result in judgment. And there must have been some signs that occurred warning the people before the judgments were unleashed, right? Because God never does anything without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. In biblical prophecy, the moon always symbolizes Israel, whereas the sun always symbolizes Gentile nations. The sun, the moon, and the stars were not created until the fourth day. Light already existed upon the earth along with vegetation, trees, and flowers, which were created on the third day. Trees and plants need sunlight and rain, but the sun didn't exist until the fourth day. Without the sun or the moon, there are no currents in the oceans, therefore, there is no climate. And without climate, there is no rain. It didn't rain in those times. It didn't rain until the flood of Noah's time. We know this because Genesis 2, 5, 6 tells us this. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. So if there was no sun or moon and there was no rain, why did God create plants on the feasts and festivals? Joel 2.30, 31, concerning the appointed end times, the Lord said, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is concerning the end times. Jesus, as Jesus said to us, would occur earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, and rumors of wars. Blood is a sign of blood being shed. It is a sign of war and judgment. Smoke and fire are signs of volcanic eruptions and of earthquakes in 2014. 2015. Four blood moons fell exactly on four significant Jewish festivals. They called the blood moon tetrads. I will cover this part specifically below. Just note this four is the number that symbolizes the sovereignty of the word of God throughout the entire earth. The moon symbolizes God's protection and hand over the nation and people of Israel. The blood red color of the eclipse represented bloodshed 
coming judgment. The number two, since the eclipses occurred over a two-year period, in the Bible symbolizes division. Therefore, it was a warning concerning the division of the land of Israel. Joel 3. 1. 2 tells us the single event that kickstarts the seven-year tribulation period and the judgment of the nations. In those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. We are dealing with the nations dividing up the land of Israel. And if you read further in Joel, the Bible even specifically identifies the nations at the root cause of the division, which is found in verse 4. Now what have you against me, Ty and Sidon, and all you regions of Philistia? Philistia is the region of the Gaza Strip, the area of the Philistines. Today, they are known as the Palestinians. The name Palestine came from the Romans who, after destroying the Second Temple and Jerusalem, renamed Israel to the name Philistia after the Philistines to mock God and the Israelites. The Palestinians are at the very heart and core motivation behind the two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians, which the Bible also prophesies about from the prophet Daniel concerning the Antichrist, who will come and confirm a seven-year peace treaty dealing not just with the entire world, but the very land of Israel. Ty and Sidon were the areas belonging to the Phoenicians who were trade experts, famously written about by the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 28, concerning the king of Tyre, which is a foreshadowing of the Antichrist. After the Greeks and Romans conquered Ty and Sidon, the Phoenicians immigrated to Greece and Rome. The entire continent of Europe was also named by the Phoenicians after the famous Phoenician king Ty's daughter, who was named Europa. So today, the EU, UN, and even America itself are byproducts of inherited areas of Ty and Sidon, the Phoenicians. These are the nations that are going to facilitate and influence this seven-year peace treaty confirmed by the Antichrist. You must understand the significance of this and what takes place. Fast forward to April 8, 2024, Seven years later, after the first eclipse in August of 2017, we have another eclipse that will not only be visible across the United States, but its path of totality in comparison to the 2017 eclipse will put a giant X across the United States. The only difference now is there is not a Revelation 12 sign occurring. This eclipse isn't over the entire United States, just the eastern half of the nation. And this doesn't occur after a presidential election but rather seven months prior to the 2024 presidential elections. The important sign that most people forget, overlook, and miss concerning the end times and concerning the Gog and Magog war is what occurs prior to the war. In various religious texts and prophecies, there are numerous indications and warnings about the events leading up to the ultimate showdown between the forces of good and evil. These signs are often subtle and easily disregarded by those who are not paying close attention or who are preoccupied with the hustle and bustle of daily life. One of the key factors that precede the Gog and Magog War is a period of increasing chaos and turmoil in the world. This can manifest in different forms, such as political unrest, natural disasters, economic instability, and social upheaval. It is during this time that the seeds of discord and conflict are sown setting the stage for the ultimate confrontation between the opposing forces. Another important sign is the rise of a powerful and charismatic leader who will exert tremendous influence over the masses. This leader, often referred to as the Antichrist or the False Prophet, will deceive many with his persuasive rhetoric and promises of peace and prosperity. However, behind the facade of benevolence, lies a sinister agenda aimed at consolidating power and control over the world. In addition, there will be a growing sense of moral decay and spiritual apathy among the population, leading to a widespread disregard for ethical values and a rejection of traditional beliefs. This moral decline will pave the way for the forces of darkness to gain a foothold and spread their influence unchecked. The Bible tells us that there is peace in Israel, they are living in complete peace and safety and are unsuspecting of any threats from any nations. They are living without walls or defenses. What has happened already? Israel split into two and became Israel and Judah. Judah had Jerusalem and the temple for worship. 
Israel decided to make a new capital and a new mount for worship. This was against God's desire for them. They moved away from the laws of God and sinned in his eyes. God sent the Assyrian king against them because of their sin. The ten tribes were dispersed and God turned his face away from them. Eventually, Judah committed similar sins and was sent into captivity for a short while. When they returned, they rebuilt the city and the temple. God had to allow them back because he had given them a promise that the Messiah, their king, the scepter, would come from Judah. The Messiah came, and they killed him. Rome burned their temple and dispersed them throughout the nations. God turned his face away again. He used them for his purpose, that they would be a light to the nations. We, the nations, can see the problems for humanity in serving a pure and holy God, and that it is impossible without a Savior. The concept of serving a pure and holy God presents a myriad of challenges for humanity across the globe. The inherent nature of man, marked by imperfection and a propensity towards sin, stands in stark contrast to the purity and holiness of God. The disparity between the two creates a rift that seems insurmountable for mankind to bridge on their own. In recognizing the need for a savior, humanity acknowledges its inherent limitations and the impossibility of attaining perfection on its own. It is through this acknowledgement that the concept of a savior gains significance and relevance in the quest for spiritual fulfillment and salvation. The savior acts as a bridge between the flawed nature of humanity and the pure and holy essence of God, offering a pathway for reconciliation and redemption. The search for a savior transcends cultural and geographical boundaries uniting nations in their common quest for spiritual enlightenment and salvation. Regardless of creed or background, the recognition of the need for a savior underscores the universal desire for transcendence and divine connection. It is in this shared understanding that the foundation for unity and cooperation among nations is laid, paving the way for a collective journey towards spiritual growth and enlightenment. As nations navigate the complexities of serving a pure and holy God, the presence of a Savior becomes increasingly indispensable in guiding humanity towards a path of righteousness and salvation. The Savior embodies the embodiment of divine grace and mercy, offering hope and redemption to all who seek solace in their faith. Through the Savior's teachings and example, nations are inspired to strive for moral excellence and spiritual purity, aligning their actions with the will of God. In conclusion, the recognition of the challenges inherent in serving a pure and holy God underscores the paramount importance of a Savior in guiding humanity towards spiritual fulfillment and salvation. As nations unite in their quest for divine connection and enlightenment, the presence of a Savior serves as a beacon of hope and guidance, illuminating the path towards a harmonious relationship with the divine. It is through the acknowledgement of our limitations and the embrace of the Savior that humanity finds solace and redemption in the pursuit of spiritual excellence and enlightenment. God loved His chosen people and promised that He would whistle for them and call them back to the promised land. We see this has happened since the Balfour Treaty after World War I. The Sixth Seal Judgment opens with severe cosmic disturbances that affect the Earth following a great earthquake. The sun became black as a sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. This describes a lunar eclipse, commonly referred to as a blood moon. These eclipses can portend judgments that God is sending upon the world, specifically to Israel. A blood moon tetrad is a series of four lunar eclipses, minus any other partial eclipses in between that fall on Passover and Sukkot. Lunar eclipses are warnings for Israel on a lunar calendar, and solar eclipses are warnings for the rest of the Gentile world on a solar calendar. Since the birth of Jesus over 2,000 years ago, this has happened eight separate times, each time with important significance for Israel. In 1493-94, to 94, a tetrad appeared after King Ferdinand of Spain ousted the Jews in 1492 from his country. Christopher Columbus, a Jew, left Spain to find a new land where his people could move. That land today is America. In 1949-50, a tetrad appeared after Israel became an independent state in 1948. 
signifying its miraculous re-establishment after its destruction in 70 AD. In 1967-68, a tetrad occurred following the Six-Day War of 1967 for the first time in 2,000 years. Jerusalem was reinstated as the capital of Israel during a miraculous Six-Day War. In 2014-15, the eighth tetrads happened with a solar eclipse in the middle, a solar eclipse bodice warning for the rest of the non-Jewish world. Some predict that it means war is coming to the world. This coincides with President Trump's pre-presidential potential. Sudan, the next tetrad, will not happen for another 500 years. The most recent blood moon, not a tetrad, occurred during the midterm election in the United States on November 8, 2022. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the sight of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to stand? One thing is sure, from the richest and most powerful down to the weakest and poorest people on the earth will understand that God's judgment has arrived. There will be no place to hide and they will have to face God's wrath. The sixth seal judgment will be a terrifying day on the earth for those who are left behind after the rapture of the church. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications about the latest videos from our channel. Please leave your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again in the next videos. Have a great day and see you soon. Hey, and see you soon.